Volcano Manor can be one of the most treacherous and tricky places in the entire game. And if you don't know where to go or what to look for, it can be easy to miss some things. Here are some things you might have missed in Volcano Manor. When you first enter Volcano Manor, make sure to get the grace and then go to the right and talk to Tanith. She'll try to make you question your own existence, but eventually she'll give you the drawing room key, which we will need later on. Next, you'll want to head up the stairs that are at the southeast of that room. You'll find a giant dining hall at the top of the stairs, and at the back of the room will be an invader waiting for you, Inquisitor Giza himself. Take him out, and the Elden Ring pizza cutter, I mean Giza's wheel, will be yours. From the Volcano Manor Grace, head to the hall that is west of the Grace. Use the drawing room key to open the first door on the right. Go to the north side of the room and find the wall with the crooked painting hanging up. You can't attack in these rooms, but you can walk or roll into it to reveal a hidden passageway. Go through the first metal gateway and head left, south, to another hallway. Fight your way through the snails and at the end of the hallway will be a body with a cookbook on it. And then directly next to that body will be another hidden wall that you can destroy to reveal another room. Inside the room will be the depraved perfumer Carmon Summon. Head out from where you just got the summon and retrace your steps back to the dark open room. Directly in front of you will be a set of stairs. Follow the stairs down and they will lead you to another poorly lit open room. Inside this room will be an enemy that is extremely quick, but focus up, assert your dominance, and you will be one step closer to becoming Wolverine with some sweet claws here in Elden Ring. Oh, also, side note, this weapon comes equipped with the skill Bloodhound Step, which will make you more agile, but also make you look that much more cinematic as you try to avoid some attacks, uh, but ultimately fail and die. But at least you look dang good doing it. From where you just defeated the enemy, head west through the metal gate and follow the hallway. This will lead you to the Prison Town Church site of Grace. You'll want to open the double doors and through them is where this level opens up and can get a bit confusing. Head right and follow the path. We do want to say that you can jump from rooftop to rooftop if you have a little Michael Scott in you, but for the sake of this video, it'll be easier to describe and follow this way. Keep following our steps down the path and you'll run into an Iron Virgin. They are tough, tanky, and have a lot of pent-up aggression. Makes sense? Once defeated, take a left down the stairs and follow the stairs all the way down until you reach a little courtyard area with two stone bird statues. On the right side, there will be a fog wall that you can break with a stone sword key. Inside will be another angry iron virgin. The Comet Azure spell works great here, as it does almost everywhere. And inside, up the stairs, will be the Crimson Amber Medallion plus one, which will increase your maximum HP by 7%. From the Guest Hall side of Grace, head out the double doors that lead east. You'll want to jump down and follow the lava trail, but don't run through the lava for obvious reasons, unless you're into that kind of thing, and then turn right and head up the stairs and follow the path. You'll reach another courtyard with hanging cages all around and a slinky salamander waiting to annoy you. There will be two cages that serve as lifts. The right lift goes down and will lead to a magma worm boss fight, but the left one is where we want to go. Head up, Take a left and go up the stairs and make sure to go and raise the bridge. It can save you a lot of headaches and time, so make like Shia LaBeouf and just do it, please. The next step is to head into the very obvious boss arena where you will have a rather large and in charge boss waiting for you. The God Skin Noble, which has incredible music, so just wanted that to be said. But this boss is tough if it's your first go around, but it is weak to bleed and frostbite, so use that to your advantage. Once you're able to avoid getting squished and rolled on and are able to defeat the Godskin Noble, you'll get the Godskin Stitcher and Noble Presence. From the Subterranean Inquisition Chamber Grace, head southeast and jump off the ledge, then stick to the left and jump across these fallen pillars. Progress through the cave and you'll run up to a floor that will give out once you are on it. Let gravity do what it knows how to do best and then head southeast 
through the tunnel where you will find a fog wall. There will be not one, but two abductor virgins that you will have to slay, but once you do, you will receive the Inquisitor's Jirindol weapon. Remember those rooftops that we said that you could parkour on earlier? Well, now is the time that we need to do that. Start at the Prison Town Church Grace and head right out of the door and then follow us as we hop from rooftop to rooftop. You want to fall down here where an omen killer will be in front of you. Take them out or run past and go east where you'll find an archway to go through. Inside will be the Erdtree Seal which, if you're running a faith build, could be of great use to you. From where we got the Erdtree Seal, head back west to the fire and then take a left to go through this smaller doorway. Head all the way through and then take a right to go down the skinny staircase. There will then be a jump that you need to complete. No pressure, just lava awaiting for you if you fail. Make your way down and keep the rock wall on your left until you reach this creepy cemetery. In the back of the cemetery, towards the northeast, will be the smoldering shield guarded by a giant pot. Starting from where we got the Crimson Amber Medallion, head south across the bridge. Stay right and run past the Slinky Salamander and head up this ladder. Run straight across the roof and then jump down onto this balcony. Inside the room will be an omen killer and on the body on the bed will be the Albanaric Staff and one of the most hilarious looking headpieces in the whole game, the Albanaric Mask. The mask actually increases your arcane by 4, but reduces your flask healing by 10%. From the Temple of Igle Grace, head out the archway to the north. Head up the lift and take an immediate right. Go through the archway and head down the stairs and then midway through the bridge you're going to want to hop off onto this ledge below and on the body will be the Crimson Tear Scarab headpiece which increases the healing of your Crimson Tear Flask by 10%. From the Temple of Igle Grace again, head out the same archway as before and go up the lift again except this time head down the lift again and jump off halfway down to go in this room. Go west and jump out this window, then jump across the lava, pass through these archways, and then climb the ladder. There are other ways for you to get to this exact point, but this is the way we went as there are some other small items that you can gather along your way. At the top of the ladder, turn left and go all the way down the hall until you see this door. Go through the door that leads into a rather grandiose style room and then there will be another double door. Open it, and directly in front of you will be the Man Serpent Ashes, but it is guarded by enemies, of course. Starting from the same room we just got the Man Serpent Ashes in, head up the first set of stairs and then turn around and go up the next set of stairs that are leading west. You will need a Stone Sword key to break through the fog wall. Go through the wooden doors and then immediately turn right and fall gently, or as gently as you can and then head up the stairs that lead to this empty hallway. Go up one more set of stairs, through the door, and on your right you'll find the Dagger Talisman, which increases critical damage by a whopping 17%. Right from where we got the last item, you'll notice all of these cages that are suspended by chains in front of you. Carefully, reiterate it one more time, carefully make your way down these until you reach the bottom. Head northeast once you do reach the bottom and there will be a room with the Royal Knight's Resolve in it. This Ash of War can be incredibly useful as it buffs the damage of your next hit by 80%, 80%. That's a lot of damage. So, those are some things you might have missed in Volcano Manor. If there's anything you think we missed, help out your fellow Tarnished down in the comments and let them know. If you enjoyed, consider leaving a like and subscribing for future videos and we'll see you in the next one.